Let's do a video about the snakes. Let's get them out. Ron, this is dispatch. What's going on YouTube? Buck Rub here and welcome to another edition of Buck Wild Trucking. Uh, I am at home uh, currently. I'm off for the weekend. This is my uh, coffee cup that one of my sons got me uh, inside it. <laughs> anyway, I dig it. More a little morning coffee here and uh, I thought I would do something a little different. You know, um, We've done some feedings of our snake that sometimes we get a good response, sometimes we don't. Uh, but as new snake owners, I figured I would do something a little different and maybe talk about my snakes and the differences that uh, that I saw in them. Uh, I have two snakes. I have um, I have Lucy, who is a one-year-old uh, ball python. Uh, she's right at a little over 600 grams. And then I have Abigail, who is our um, our um, bow constrictor? Uh, she's a red tail boa, uh, or a, a BCC, a BCI um, boa constrictor. Um, you know, they're two very different snakes. When we first decided that we wanted a snake, our uh, our son they have a, a two year old uh, boa constrictor, and, and she's a big one. I would guess she's five five and a half foot long, uh, a little over two years two years, and. Uh, and they would get her out and she would crawl all over me and my wife, crawl around our neck, up our arm. She would almost give you a hug. And we just fell in love with that snake. And we wanted one very badly. So we started looking and uh, it was very hard to find, you know, uh, red tail boas in the area. The county next to us, uh, any constrictor is against the law, so you can't have them in the county. And, uh, and they just didn't have them in stock. And we looked at them online, but ordering them online, most of these breeders, you know, some of them wanted thousand dollars for these snakes. And, uh, and, uh, and they carried them in the pet shops for about a hundred dollars. Um, but we just couldn't hardly find a boa constrictor. And we truly didn't know the difference in a boa constrictor and a ball python. Uh, we just didn't know. And uh, I saw a Craigslist ad where a guy had uh, two uh, ball pythons. He had a um, he had an albino and he had the, the normal and he wanted $200 for both of them. Uh, so I sent the guy a message. He was just local. He's actually a breeder of, um, God, what is it? Uh, green, green tree pythons is what he is. And he, he does a few uh, ball pythons so that his kids can get involved. Uh, if you've ever seen any videos on green tree pythons, they're uh, pretty mean snakes. <laughs> so I know I don't want to jack with them. Um, but anyway, I called him and I said, or I texted him and on Facebook and I told him I, I you know, I just wanted the common and he sold it to us for 50 bucks. So when my wife got off work, we drove out to the town, we picked up this snake and there we brought her home. And then we immediately started uh, getting advice from uh, our son who has the boa constrictor on what we needed to do to set up for her. So we went and got her a 10 gallon terrarium kit, you know, and it was made for a snake, but it wasn't specifically for a ball python. And we set it up and, and not knowing exactly what we were doing, we were setting her up with 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark. We had a little reverse light thing going and, uh, and, and she wasn't real active. She would always stay hidden, although she would come out. But then as we started reading, we found that the, uh, the ball pythons don't require the light. They spit. We started talking to a breeder who we were buying our rats from. Um, I think, it, I think the name of the place is SMS Morphs, SMF Morphs out of Longview, I believe. Uh, they're pretty big. They've got a Facebook page and they go to all the shows. They sell very expensive snakes, but they also breed rats. So we were buying rats from her. Uh, but she told us not to give, uh, uh, 
uh, Lucy any, any light, that they, these, the snakes were different. They spent most of their time in the dark. And so we did, we took her off the light and found out she was a lot more active at night when she was smaller. Um, so, and she would always, you could always tell when she was hungry, when she was little, she was eating about once a week and she would come out and start searching the, the, uh, the, the roof and looking like she was trying to get her way out. So then we knew we were, she was hungry. We'd go get her a rat and feed her the next day. And then she would pretty much, you know, stay hidden, just come out for a drink of water. Um, once we got her, once we got our new snake and got the 40 gallon aquarium, she don't hardly budge at all. She pretty much stays hidden all the time. She does come out when she's hungry still. And now we're feeding her about every three weeks. Now the bow constrictor, um, that's a different deal. That's how they, they require uh, 12 hours of light. Uh, and, and she, she's active during the day and at night, but primarily, you know, at night is when I'll wake up, see her, you know, moving around and searching across the top. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll usually go get her, uh, you know, we'd go get her a rat the next day, unless we had one, uh, had one frozen in there. But anyway, they're just, they're very different snakes. Uh, if I knew what I knew now, I probably wouldn't have the ball python, but since I do, I love her. I like, I like the bow constrictor. I think it's a more personable snake. Um, uh, but anyway, I was bored. I figured I'd make me a video. Uh, Kelly, Kelly's been gone for a week. She went to, uh, California to see one of her daughters and then she landed in Denver yesterday to visit her other daughter and she won't be home till Sunday so I've uh so I'm home by myself and off if it we got rain from this hurricane so I thought I might do some yard work uh, you know since it's cool outside but everything's still pretty wet but I Thought I would show you uh, the differences that I saw in the snakes. Uh, like I say, I'm by far, by far no expert, so uh, I'm still learning. I still watch videos, and um, and uh, so I'm probably doing a lot of stuff wrong. So the purists don't need to be telling me I'm killing my snakes, or if you do, be nice about it, because I'll I'll listen to what you got to say <laughs> for sure. But those are my snakes, and uh, and we love them both. So if you want one, you should grab one too. So I'm going to show them to you now. This is Lucy. Lucy is a ball python, hence her name, Lucille Ball. She is, um, she's right at a year old. Uh, we got her when she was, I think, eight weeks. And she was under, under, I think she was 90 grams when we got her. And uh, she's close to 600 now. Um, not very long, but she's, she's fat. Now, when we first got her, we were feeding uh, live pinky rats and that we were getting from a, a breeder. But it was, you know, we didn't want to have rats on hand. So, uh, so we were going and buying them from her. Um, it, it was kind of a pain. Sometimes we felt we were putting her out to go out and buy a $6 rat from her. But, uh, uh, so we, we were feeding frozen for a while, uh, frozen thawed. Now, um, uh, Lucy here, she'll eat either frozen or live. Uh, and we do both. Sometimes we'll buy, uh, we'll buy four or five rats and have a land, but she's now eating a large rat. Uh, we were feeding her small rats for a long time. And you've seen the video that we posted of that. Uh, I'm sure, <laughs> Um, she's actually more active, uh, than she normally is. Uh, something about her is, uh, well, from the very moment we got her, she's been grumpy. Uh, now she hasn't done it in a while, but when she was small, uh, she struck at me three times. She struck right at my nose once. She struck at my hand. She's never got me, so I don't even know how bad it hurts, um, but she did, and she's always been kind of grumpy. The kids are a little scared to hold her because of that. Uh, but she hasn't done it in a long time, and, and she's a lot more active right now than she normally is. Typically, she's not a lot of fun to watch in, a, in her cage. She'll, uh, she'll bury herself in her substrate, and uh, sometimes we won't see her for days. Um, she doesn't like her face messed with. She doesn't like her head messed with. I can't really tell that she enjoys <laughs> uh, being held. Um, 
and when I put her back in her cage, she goes right into her hide, and that's that's where she stays. But we do try to we do try to handle her at least once a week, um, just so that she's not like that. But she's she's not as much fun as as the other the other snake. The other snake seems to have a lot of personality, but we love her anyway. We love her anyway. She's a, she's very head shy. See how she jerks her head? She does that a lot. And like I say, I am no snake expert. I've watched a bunch of videos. It's funny. Uh, you guys that are subscribers to me know the trucker drama. Uh, there is actually snake drama or reptile drama. You ought to see these YouTubers. Uh, some of them just really talk smack about each other. So it's, it's kind of funny. I guess no matter what genre you're in, uh, you're going to have drama. <laughs> it's kind of humorous. Uh, but I try to learn what I can. Uh, we have always had an issue where, uh, where Abby, our, our snake that I'll show you in a minute, uh, where she, um, uh, she sheds her whole skin. We have never been able to get this one to shed her whole skin. She always sheds it in pieces and it always takes quite a while. Uh, and when she first started doing it, we were really concerned and uh, we were talking to some of the snake breeders in the area and some of them had said, take a washcloth and give them a bath. But, you know, this <laughs> rubbing her down with a washcloth, trying to get that dead skin off really stresses her out. So we don't like to do that. Uh, but she is completely shedded right now. And she is, uh, as you can see, she's beautiful. Uh, we keep her in a uh, in a 40 gallon. We changed her into a 40 gallon uh, terrarium uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, actually, we did it when we got the new snake. Uh, when we got the, uh, when we got the new snake, we put the snake in the 10 gallon. The uh, the um, uh, uh, bow constrictor. We put put her in the uh, in the 10 gallon, and we've now got her in a 40 gallon. Ever since we put her in the 40 gallon, she pretty much spends all of her time. Uh, underneath the substrate. Uh, before I got her out, I had to dig for her, and she was not where she normally is. Normally, she's on the cold side of her terrarium underneath the water bowl, all curled up. But today, she was kind of in the middle between the heat pad and the other one. And uh, for a minute there, I was wondering if when I got her out yesterday, I forgot to put the lid on because I didn't think she was in there, but I found her. Um, but yeah, she's She's a lot more active today. If she did this all of the time, she would probably be one of my favorites, but uh, but we love her anyway. So, let's go get the other one. Now this here is Abby. Abigail's her name. She is a BCI red tail boa. And uh, I got her from a breeder who does um, who does exotics or uh, morphs actually, and she is actually her daddy is a is an albino uh, red tail boa, and her mom is a standard um, BCI boa constrictor. So anyway, she's a couple of months couple of months old. And, uh, and she's very active. This particular snake is, um, she loves to be held. She loves to crawl through your fingers. She likes to have her chin rubbed. She likes to have her head rubbed. Um, and she, she's very pretty. Now I'm no expert on snakes. I'm still learning. I'm not starting a snake channel. I just figured I would tell you the differences that I see. Uh, but she's a very active snake. Uh, during the daytime and during the evening, she moves around uh, quite a bit. She doesn't she doesn't hide in her hide very often. Uh, if I open the lid, she's immediately uh, poking her head up and ready to be held. And it's uh, it's kind of funny that when we go to when we go to put her back in her cage, she fights me. You know, she'll she'll wrap around your hand, and as you try to get her off with your other hand, she'll wrap around that hand and. Uh, and then as soon as you put her in, she's wanting out again. She wants to be held. And uh, even if I set her on the floor, uh, 
she'll crawl right back up in the chair and onto my lap and up on my arms. Now, right now, she acts like she's wanting to go somewhere, but she's really not. If I let her down on my body, she'll end up right back up on my arm. Uh, she likes to get in, um, she likes to get in Kelly's hair, crawl up her shoulder and then crawl up in her hair. It's, uh, it's funny. Uh, she's eating, um, a medium sized mouse and I would like to be, uh, feeding her, um, rats, uh, but it's very difficult to find small enough rats and I do feed them live. I, I fed frozen before, although I've not fed her frozen. She has ate live. Uh, ever since she was born, but she's getting uh, a a medium mouse uh, or the largest of the small mice about once a week. Uh, she weighs, I believe I weighed her the other day, she's right at 206 grams, um, but I absolutely love the snake and I love its personality. So... And then you can do your own research on how big they get, you know, any, they, they say they can get 10 foot long. Uh, I've never, I've never had any, any friends that have had one that big, but, but, uh, that's what they say. So if that's the case, we'll build and she'll probably outlive me. Um, but we have one of our kids loves snakes too. So I reckon that they'll inherit them. But she's very, very gentle. And she's never struck at me, not one time. And she eats very aggressively. She's not, uh, I put the mouse in and, uh, and she's on it pretty quick. Anyway, red tail, boa constrictor. This is Abby. Say hi, Abby.